Hello to every one of our viewers. Um, I'm looking forward for the next presentation, actually, and um, I'm delighted that Eric Vire, a senior analyst at Yol Development, uh, was able to join us. And today he will tell us a bit about uh, technologies, quantum dots, OLED, mini LED, micro LED, nano LED for um, the next generation TV. Eric, over to you. Hi, Christoph. Thanks a lot for the introduction and uh, thanks to TechBig for the opportunity to, to contribute to this event. Um, I'll start with a quick word on uh, your development. We're a market research and um, consulting company. We're active in many industries, as you can see here. And uh, uh, most of what you're going to hear and see in this presentation today comes from our, our collection of display-related reports. So I, I'll start with uh, kind of a high-level uh, information about the, the, the TV market. Uh, the decade started with a, a retrofit market where uh, most consumers were uh, replacing their good, old, but very bulky uh, cathode ray tube TVs with a flat panel, be it uh, plasma or LCD. This took about 10 years, and by, by the end of, uh, I would say, around 2010, they, this was over, and the market was already almost fully converted to a uh, flat panel. What that means is that since then, uh, the market has slowed down significantly, uh, driven only by natural replacement circle cycles. And uh, it also means that the industry is constantly looking to uh, bring new features, improve performance, to try to compel consumers uh, to buy new TVs. So we've seen uh, more pixels going from HD, full HD, uh, 4K, UHD, now 8K. We've seen better pixel, high dynamic range, white color gamuts, etc. Uh, faster or better moving uh, pixel with uh, high refresh rates, um, um, variable refresh rates. And now in 2021, I would say no, uh, no high end TV can go without a, a gaming mode, which is not a feature in itself, but kind of, uh, settings that combines all the, the benefits of, um, the other features I mentioned. Another remarkable feature of, of course, is, uh, uh, the increase of the screen size. Uh, 55 inch is the new 43 inch, and now you're starting to find 75 inches for just a few hundred dollars in, uh, in discount store. So if you look closer now uh, at the structure of this market, uh, we estimate that in 2021, there will be about 224 million TV sold. Uh, out of those, about 8 million will be what we consider as premium TV, which uh, we qualify as uh, TVs that sell for more than $1,500. And those 8 million TVs will capture about $20 billion or about one-fifth uh, of the market. So overall, you have a, this premium TV market that represents less than 4% of the volume, but more than 20% of the revenue. And this is, of course, where the uh, the battle is for uh, those new emerging TV technologies. That says, don't forget that more than 75% of TV sell for less than $600 and actually close to one third sell for less than $200. So what that means is that LCD, uh, because it's so uh, cheap, is not going to go anywhere anytime soon. So. Question is, why hasn't OLED won the premium TV awards? For those of you who have been following this market for a long time, you might remember that when the, the first OLED TV uh, came to the market uh, around 2013, uh, there was great hope that uh, the cost would come down significantly. And since they're uh, significantly better in terms of picture quality, self-emissive, pixel level dimming, etc. Uh, one would expect that it would have taken over by now. But what happened is that uh, so far, OLED has failed to deliver on, on the promise, on the cost promise. Uh, the, the structure is essentially intrinsically simpler than LCD, but yet they're still quite expensive to manufacture. And uh, OLED have so far failed to uh, close the cost gap with, uh, with LCD. Meanwhile, LCD performance have uh, increased and improved uh, continuously. It, it was so that LCD was a fairly major technology with little room for